What's up guys? I know you guys have been waiting for this tour to happen for about two years now. I haven't done a tour that long. So let's go ahead and let me show you the new home theater. As you can see, we are in a pretty large space. This is a lot bigger than my old theater. My old theater was, I believe it was like 13 by 14. This space is actually about 12 and a half foot wide by 25 foot deep. And it does have a kind of a lower ceiling. My old theater had 10 foot ceilings. This one, since we're in a basement, it's only 70 foot high ceilings. But let's go over the equipment really quick. I'm gonna bring you over here. I've got the equipment rack up front. And starting off on the bottom, we've got a pair of monolith amplifiers. I've got the 7X and 5X. These are rated at 200 watts per channel. So the bottom amp is the seven channel version. The one on the top here is gonna be the five channel version. So beast of an amplifier, if you ask me, for not too much money. For the processor, I've got the JBL SDP55. I did this review on the channel a few years back. So if you missed that review, I'll leave some links for this and also anything I'm talking about in this video down below in this video's description if I did the review. So this is a 16 channel processor and then I do have the model price amplifiers powering the processor. For playback, for media playback and demo playback, I've got an OPPO 203, the venerable OPPO 203, and then as well as the Panasonic 820. So if you wanna get that tone mapping for your TV or your projector, which doesn't have very good tone mapping, the Panasonic will do that. So these are great pieces. The OPPO, obviously, if you still have that, count your blessings that you still actually have one of those 203s. For power conditioning and surge suppression, we've got the Panamax 5300. I actually also have one of these in my living room, but this here, this is uh, protecting all the gear in the home theater right now. Then above that, I've got the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox X. And then on the very top, for the video gamers out there, I've got the PSVR. So if you come over to my house and you're playing this, uh, make sure you play it with some self-restraint and don't get upset and throw the controller at the screen. As you guys know, I'm a fan of Perlison speakers, my dying love. I've got a bunch of Perlison R-series speakers. I mean, these, they work so good, they're so good. I actually named them my speaker of the year for 2023. But here I've got the R5C, this is the center channel. And I've also got the big boy. This is the R70. This is the flagship, the biggest model in the R-series setup. This is a wonderful sounding speaker and it puts out a ton of bass. But helping the speakers, I've got a couple of subwoofers here. First off, this is a subwoofer that I reviewed a few months back. This is the Rel 1205 Mark II. It's got a 12 inch driver up front. It's got a nice little vinyl wrap, Rel logo embossed on the front. This actually is a very punchy, speedy subwoofer, home theater centric from Morel. It's not their biggest model, but this is uh, the, the middle of the child. There's a 10 inch, 12 inch, and a 15 inch version. I did review the 12 and the 15, so check out those reviews if you missed them. Now moving over to the opposite corner, I've also reviewed this as well on the channel. This is the Rhythmic F18. As the name would imply, this has got a, an 18 inch aluminum cone woofer this will play down, I forgot what my measurements were in room, but it played down to like single digits. So if you wanna get some nice infrasonic response in your home theater, this thing will do it. This is a, a monster of a subwoofer. And I've got two of these. I've also got two of the Rel 1205 Mark IIs. So this is in the front right corner. I got the Rel in the front left corner. And then I got the same compliment in the back opposite rear right corner and left corner as well. So I've got four subwoofers in total, front and then rear. Now let's move on over to the surround speakers. These are the Bowers and Wilkins 663s. These are on the side surrounds and I've also got them for back surrounds as well. So side and back, if you're wondering, Shane, why do you have Perlison speakers, but you got Bowers and Wilkins surround speakers? Well, before I upgraded to the, uh, the Perlison R series, I did have the Bowers & Wilkins 700 series, which was a really nice match for these guys. Obviously, the Perlisons and the Bowers & Wilkins aren't gonna have perfect timbre, but I mean, it's close enough for what it is right now. And then for the high channel speakers, I've got the Bowers & Wilkins. These are circular with the concentric driver in the middle of them, the 683s. So that's gonna be front and also rear height channels for Atmos and DTSX and Oro and all that good stuff. And then, this ain't a home theater without a projector, I also reviewed this one as well. This is the JVC NZ8. If you wanna get 
a fantastic image that's nearly OLED quality, except on a projector screen. This is the, this is the bad boy to get. This will do 8K upscaling, so if you want to go larger than large, you want to get that really tight pixel structure, turn on the 8K upscaling, this will give you a nice crispy image. It's super bright, and this was an upgrade over my NX7 from the previous generation, so wonderful projector. And I want to say the best bang for buck in the JVC lineup. Then of course, what home theater isn't complete without seating. Also, I reviewed these as well. These are the Tuscany. This uh, actually has the drop down middle console. So if you want to give some space between you and your guest, drop down the console. You got a nice little table here with a little USB and a couple of extra outlets. So if you want to power up your iPad or whatever you got here, your laptop, you can use that to power up there. And then you can put your drinks here. And of course, being a Valencia seating, you do have lumbar support. The controller is located here. You can actually bump this out to help with your help with your back. So if you got some back problems to make it a little bit more comfortable, that can be adjusted. The headrest can be adjusted. And then of course it does recline. So you can actually put the seat out. There's little uh, holders here for your tray table and then the LED and then the footrest also lights up as well. And then coming up in here into the, the middle row, I've got some seat craft seats. So these guys here, they do look a little bit different than the Valencia seats, but they're still equally as comfortable. These actually came before the Valencias, but I did upgrade to the Valencias. So um, obviously I'm not gonna get rid of these because these are still perfectly fine. Very comfy, the same kind of features as the Valencias. But these also have the USB power controls here located on the inner armrest. Again, the tray table support as well. And then you do get the lighted cup holders. Now, besides the JBL, I do have the Denon AVR, the A1H, which is Denon's flagship a receiver, powering everything that I've been testing out for the past couple of months. As far as performance, this thing is probably as good as it gets for receivers. The setup is pretty expansive, so let's go ahead and check that out. I'm not gonna deep dive into all the settings, but if you're coming from a Denon, all of the settings are still here, albeit the user interface has gotten a much nicer facelift. One of the main features is that it does support 8K input maxed out at 40 gigabits per second. There's three different options, enhanced, which is for 4K HDR, 8K and standard, which won't accept 4K or HDR. The next options are the speaker layouts. You can max out the channels and use all 15 channels in the main room. There's 13.1 with a powered zone two, or you can choose to power zone three instead. There's 11 channels for the main room, and you can have zone two and zone three powered. 13 channels for the main room, one amp for zone two, and one amp for zone three with mono speakers. Here are 13 channels for the main zone, plus you can bi-amp your mains. Next is 11 channels in the main room using two amps for bi-amping the fronts and two amps to power zone two. Next is 13 channels for main and a second set of B stereo speakers. Here are seven channels for the main room, plus you can bi-amp all of them. And finally, you can shut off the internal amps and use the A1H as a preamp processor only. As far as room correction, there's both Odyssey and Dirac on board. I chose to use Dirac, but you can also use the Graphic EQ if you want to do it manually. Now this is the heaviest receiver I've had in for review, weighing 70.5 pounds. It measures 17.1 inches wide by 19.6 inches in depth and 7.7 inches in height, so it is a monster AVR. It's got the drop down door on the front to hide all the buttons and the navigation pad. And the front fascia is a thick brushed aluminum. On the back, you've got outputs for 15 channels plus four independent subwoofer outputs. There are pre outs for all the channels and this will accept AK HDMI input. So for testing, we played back a few demos. First off being the Ready Player One scene, the race scene in Ready Player One. This is obviously a legendary scene. It's got a lot of movement front to back, back and forth with the newest Dirac base management update, which I didn't, which is not going to be a like deep dive into Dirac, but me and my buddies, we did try out Dirac Live at first and we were kind of underwhelmed because we couldn't understand why, you know, after running calibration, why the base was so kind of thin and lifeless. Well, if you want to bring that back, go back into your Dirac Live settings and you can see where in this graph, it kind of flattens out the base. So it kind of cleans it up gets rid of some of the boominess, but it also kind of makes everything sound a little bit dead. So I would recommend, at least this is what I did. I followed the natural curve of the bass response in this frequency measurement. 
That way I got back the infrasonic bass. And then after I did that, we got a lot more room rumble, a lot more extra low end response. But then we also got the extra clarity and extra detail that we got from the Dirac Live calibration. So in this particular scene, when the scene starts off, I forgot, I think the Eurythmics or something are playing at the start of the, at the start of the demo. When the action starts up, you got that low bass rumble when the bridge drops. When Kong is running, you can hear him run from back left speaker, oh, sorry, back right speaker all the way to the left side as well. So surround tracking was pristine. Now, when we went back and forth with direct live on and off, it was a little, I don't want to say super hard to pinpoint where the effects are coming from, but it is clearer and more precise after we ran direct live calibration. The next demo that we popped on was gravity. This is a great demo if you want to hear how well your speakers are timbre matched. And like I said, I do have Barrows and Wilkins for surround channels and then also the Perlistons up front. There is a little bit of a difference when the voices are tracking between different speakers. But aside from that, again, sound placement within the sound field, within the sound stage, track perfect. And then of course, the last demo that we checked out was the opening of The Greatest Showman. Now we only did this one because we wanted to hear how well those bass drops were at the beginning of the demo. So every time you would get the, uh, the foot stomps, you get that big thumping reverberation, that low end extension that just drones on. Also the quick, the quick jabbing bass hits. That sounded awesome. So at the time of this video, the Denon AVR A1H is selling for $6,500. But for an all-in-one package, this is kind of the cream of the crop, the best of the best for an all-in-one solution. It's got 15.4 channels, so you can do four independent subwoofers with direct live bass management, there is an extra cost for that. You can get even more precise bass control throughout your room for an even response everywhere. It's got smart features like Alexa and Google built in. So if you want to use one of your smart home features to control the AVR, you can do that as well. It's also rated at 150 watts per channel. I did not take any measurements on it, although I do believe Gene at Audioholics has. Hey folks, so the Denon A1H is a truly flagship product. In fact, it's it's a callback to the super receiver from the 2000 to 2005 era. This 15 channel behemoth weighs over 70 pounds. 25 and a half pounds of it is in just the E-Core transformer. It's got two times 33,000 microfarads of power supply capacitors. That's a huge power plant that you got there for stable power. Dual rows of heat sinks with high current devices. In fact, we confirm with Denon Engineering that the A1H can deliver about 175 watts a channel times two channels unclipped, and it can hit 70% if it's 150 watt power rating with nine channels driven. That's 105 watts times nine. That's massive. I don't know of any other single box solutions, especially in this price class that could deliver that much power with all channels driven. Now, if you want more power, you could supplement the A1H with the preamp outputs. They have a feature called preamp disconnect, and this allows you to physically disconnect the preamp from the power amp to give you even lower noise and lower distortion from the preamp outputs to get the best possible signal to your power amplifiers. Now, we've confirmed um, in the past with other Denon and Marantz receivers that their preamp outputs are always good to get, deliver about four volts RMS. That's about twice the voltage you need for most modern amplifiers to reach full power output. So that's a good thing. There's headroom there. And because this A1H is built in the Shirakawa factory in Japan, it's built to the highest standard for Denon engineering. It really is one of the best single box separate solutions on the market. How does it sound compared to the monolith amplifiers? I mean, if you've got some larger speakers using this in preamp mode hooked up to your external amplifiers, then you can see how well an amplifier will do against the internal amps. And I do think that once you go external amplification, everything is a little bit cleaner. Almost seems like, I know people say like a veil has lifted. So sound stage does open up a bit more while I did use the monolith amplifiers where it was a little slightly more congested sounding using the internal amps. I mean, if you don't have external amplification, it still sounds wonderful, don't get me wrong, but I do think you can really up the performance of this receiver if you were to go external amps. Obviously, if you're starting out 6,500 bucks, you're probably gonna use the internal amplifiers till you could save up or down the road. Just know that you do have that upgrade ability using this as a preamp pre-pro. Still fantastic with the internal amplifiers and you shouldn't have any problems 
running out of channels anytime soon anytime soon because you do get the full 15 channels beyond that obviously you're going to spend a lot more money with more expensive processors like a storm or a trinov so for 6500 bucks still a stellar deal now if you guys want to pick up anything that i've mentioned in this video i will leave some links for everything down below in this video's description as always guys thanks for watching don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and also thank you to my friend reggie who's handling the camera right now for letting me use your home theater no this isn't my house so thanks reg now this isn't uh, like a full detailed breakdown of the avr because this is not my house with the time that i got to listen to the avr stand out thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video